Coming up next on Hooten's Arkansas Football. Highlights from this weekend's exciting high school football playoff action, including yesterday's state finals in Class 5A and Class 4A. Plus, Friday night's semifinal games from AA and AAA. Highlights of those games, pregame pep talks, postgame reaction, and, of course, the latest Hooten's rankings. Stay tuned. It's all straight ahead on Hooten's Arkansas Football. You make sure you're physical. Well, I'm riding on the ball game. You get that blood in your eyes, and you play with heart. Good afternoon and welcome to Hooten's Arkansas Football. We have a 5A and 4A state champ, and by this time next week we'll have a AAA and AA state champion. Coming up in the next 30 minutes here on Hooten's Arkansas Football, we have highlights of all of this weekend's great playoff action, the semifinal games in Pine Bluff and Nashville, Barton and Springdale, and of course the two state championship games played yesterday at War Memorial Stadium in the different classifications. We'll have highlights of all of those games plus much more coming up here in the next 30 minutes on Hooten's Arkansas Football. We're glad you've tuned in on this special Sunday afternoon time, and we'll get started with a look at Class 2A, games from Springdale and Barton coming up next on Hooten's Arkansas Football. Hooten's Arkansas Football is brought to you by First Security Bank, by Landers, by Sonic, by Arkansas Heart Hospital, by First Baptist Church of Springdale and the Church at Pinnacle Hill, by Arkansas Blue Cross Blue Shield, by Alltel, by USA Drug and by the Arkansas Hospital Association. Hello, I'm Steve LaFrance with USA Drug. I know it's hard to believe you can get low discount store prices at a drugstore. Now, more of Hooten's Arkansas Football, brought to you by Lander. Oh, uh, we're sitting here in the hall of double-A football fans. This is it. In the hall of double-A football playing in Barton, Arkansas, playing the Barton Bears. And we already know their issues with their numbers and all of that. I can tell you right now what their game plan is going to be. Their game plan, first of all, is going to be to knock your socks off right off the bat. They're going to try, they're going to try to intimidate you right off the bat. They don't have no choice. If they don't hit you in the mouth early, then they already know what we do. He's an old coach and he know the deal. Supposedly a power team, the worst thing it hates is somebody trying to power them. Don't worry about all the particulars. Let's come straight off the bat, fly to the football, and hit them in their face. That's Augusta coach George Shelton and his Red Devils landing the first blow in Friday night's Class 2A semifinal game at Barton. It's Quincy Clark taking the opening kickoff 79 yards for the touchdown. That made it six to nothing at Frank McClellan Field. But Barton would get on the board. An errant snap sailed through the end zone for a safety. That made it six to two. And then Barton would take the lead in the second quarter. It's quarterback Michael Sane getting good protection, finding Anthony Harris with the 15 yard touchdown toss. That made it eight to six, Barton on top. Augusta got its running game going on its next possession though. James Turner capped a six play 48 yard drive with a 16 yard touchdown run and the Red Devils led 12 to eight. Barton threatened to regain the lead before the half when Sane got loose on the keeper, but the drive would stall inside Augusta's 20 and the Red Devils took the 12 to eight lead into halftime. Neither team scored in the third quarter, but the Augusta running game began to take its toll on the outmanned Bears. Antonio Gant led Augusta with 97 yards. Turner had 74, and Brandon Brown rushed for 65 yards, including this fourth quarter TD to seal the win. Final score, Augusta Red Devils 20, Barton 8. It was a tough ball game. They got great kids, played hard, you know, and they were everything that, uh, that I expected them to be. We just tried to keep it simple and not lose the ball game. And you got Shiloh. Got Shiloh. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, nobody wants them, but we took it that we're the ones that's going to have to play them. Shallow. I got one thing to say about Shallow. We didn't do good against Hardin Academy, but Shallow Christian, here we come. If they can slow them down and outscore them, they can beat them. I mean, that's basically what we did in 97. So Augusta took care of the old double-A king Friday night. This Saturday, the Devils will try to torment the Saints. Shallow Christian beat Junction City in Springdale Friday night and is headed back to the Rock for its fifth straight state title game appearance. But Shallow may not have this guy. Standout quarterback Rhett Lashley. He led the Saints 62 yards for a touchdown on the first series of the game, throwing a 23-yard touchdown toss to Nick Floyd for the score. But on the Saints' third possession of the game, Lashley takes a hit from Junction City's defense, and he is done for the night. Reports say Lashley has a slightly separated shoulder, but he could return Saturday for the state championship game. It would be his third straight title game at quarterback for Shiloh. Without Lashley Friday night, the Saints turn to sophomore Nate Emmert, and after some early jitters and three turnovers, Emmert settled down to complete 13 of 22 passes for 200 yards. One of Emmert's turnovers gave Junction City the ball on the seven-yard line, but the Saints' underappreciated defense stepped up big time. A dramatic goal line stand that preserved a 14 to nothing lead. Then Emmert guided the Saints on a 93-yard drive. Nick Floyd again, taking a shovel pass, 32 yards to get Shallow out of its hole. And a little bit later, Mike Sellers would score the touchdown on this reverse play. Final score, Shallow Christian, 21, Junction City, 0. I have a lot of faith in our seniors, and, you know, there's 24 of them. And it takes a team to go out there and not always one kid. And uh, it was proven tonight that these kids can overcome a lot of things. And they stayed focused on their goal, getting back to Little Rock. Coach Wood and Shallow Christian began the year in Little Rock and tied Class 4A power win in the All-Tell Hootons kickoff classic. Now the Saints are headed back to the Rock Saturday. They will take on Augusta. Augusta's making its first trip to the final since 1992 when it knocked off Murfreesboro to win it all. Hampton's number three. In fact, there's no changes in Hooton's Arkansas football rankings for Class 2A this week. The Bulldogs are followed by Harmony Grove and Junction City. Carlisle finishes the year at number six. The Bison are followed by Barton, Harding Academy, Ryzen, and Charleston. The second ten starts with Mineral Springs. Then it's the Little Johns, the Gators, the Rattlers, and Hazen. Desarc is number 16. Then it's Greenland, Mayflower, Mark Tree, and Bauxite. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Highlights from the Class 3A semifinals. And a little bit later, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Need a set of these. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Brought to you by First Security Bank. And we'll begin our Class 3A highlights in Jefferson County, where Friday night, Pine Bluff and Southeast Arkansas fans expected to see a dandy between Dollarway and Warren in the Class 3A semifinals. But this one wasn't close. The Cardinals forced Warren to punt on its first possession as the Dollarway D was jacked up, dealing some big hits, playing tough early. But on its second possession, the Lumberjack train got rolling. Quarterback Reed McKinney is one of just a few senior starters on Warren's team, and he's a pretty tough runner, an even better passer. On fourth down and four, McKinney hits Terrence Hampton in stride for a seven to nothing Lumberjack lead. Two and a half minutes later, it's McKinney again, finding Roshan Fellows coming across the middle. Fellows takes it 68 yards, for the Warren lead, it's 14 to nothing, and the route is on. Warren's defense was beasting too. Watch this, Lumberjack linebacker Caleb Bateman crushing Chris Jasper. Warren led 21 to seven in the second quarter when McKinney finds his favorite receiver, junior Brett Smith, who caught seven passes for 108 yards on the night, including this touchdown toss on the next play. That made it 28 to seven. It was 41 to seven in the third quarter when Warren started substituting freely. The final, Lumberjacks 47, Dollarway 13. It's for Justin and Matt, for Coach Rimby, for the seniors, the juniors, the sophomores, the town boomble, everybody, everybody's in this together. One, 
Let's take it to him. That's Boonville senior lineman Bill Ferguson talking to his teammates Friday night just before the defending state champ Bearcats played host to Nashville. But it was the Scrappers who scored first. Brian Pope dumped the screen to Willie Hobson, and Willie went 64 yards to make it 6 to nothing. But the Bearcats would take the momentum and the lead away from Nashville by halftime with some great plays on special teams. Nathan Adair blocked the punt, and Josh Holloway fell on it at the 7. Two plays later, fullback Brian Taylor would score. Taylor was Boonville's workhorse. 31 carries for 182 yards, and the Bearcats scored 28 unanswered points in the second half. Final score, Boonville 42, Nashville 12. Saturday night, Boonville will try to defend its state championship title against the Warren Lumberjacks, but it'll be tough. Warren again is ranked number one by Hooton's Arkansas football in Class 3A. Then it's the Bearcats. Dollarway finishes the year at number three. Then it's Nashville and PA. Clarksville starts the second five. The Panthers had a great year, but had to forfeit their playoff win over Farmington in the first round due to the use of ineligible players. Clarksville's followed by Star City, then it's Dumas, the Red Bugs, and Rivercrest. The Sand Lizards start the second ten. Dardanelle is followed by Yellville Summit, Ashdown, Gosnell, and BB. Then it's Truman, Hamburg, Ozark, Prairie Grove, and D. Queen. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, highlights from yesterday afternoon's Class 4A title game, and our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Next, you're watching... Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by Arkansas Heart Hospital. It didn't take long to figure out the battle plans for yesterday's Class 4A state title game at War Memorial Stadium with arguably the best running back tandem in the state in D'Angelo Williams and Michael Stegall. The win Yellow Jackets countered Stuttgart's air attack with a relentless ground assault. Williams and Stegall combined for 316 yards rushing and three TDs, including this 73-yard Stegall run that gave the Yellow Jackets a 7-0 first quarter lead. Williams, who gained a game high 194 yards, also added a special team score when he found a seam and broke outside for a 65-yard punt return, and the Yellow Jackets led 13-0. Stuttgart finally got on the board in the second quarter when Chris Lammers hit Freddie Dancy for a 10-yard touchdown. But here comes Williams again, exciting, finding the hole streaking untouched. 71 yards for the touchdown. The guy's unreal, and the Yellow Jackets were up 21-7. Lammers found his rhythm and would find teammate Slade Camp all afternoon. This 14-yard TD cut the lead to 21-14. Yellow Jackets by seven. But Stuttgart was driving again when Camp can't come down with this pass and Joey Smith is headed the other way. 44 yards on the interception return just before the half for win. Two plays later, it's Yellow Jacket quarterback Rob Lawson attempting his only pass of the game and it looked like a backbreaker. 48-yard touchdown toss to, you guessed it, D'Angelo Williams with 18 seconds left in the half and Wynn had a two touchdown lead. After the break, Lammers and Camp would take over in the second half. This nine yard strike cut Wynn's lead to 28-21 with 29 seconds left in the third quarter. Lammers passed for 406 yards and four touchdowns on the day. He sips another one to Camp who cuts up field for the 23 yard score but wins. Jeremy Hunt sniffs out the fake reverse on the two-point try, and the Yellow Jackets hold on to a 28-27 lead. This was a great title game. The Yellow Jackets added to their lead on the next possession. Williams hops in for his fourth touchdown of the game. That capped a seven-play, 63-yard drive, and win led by seven, 34-27. But Lammers and Camp weren't done. On fourth down and nine from their own 21, Camp who caught a mind-boggling 23 passes for 406 yards. Here he goes again. Jogging 79 yards for the touchdown, and Stuttgart only trailed by one, 34-33. But Stuttgart missed the extra point, and Wynn was able to run out the clock with D'Angelo Williams on fourth and two, picking up nine yards. The Yellow Jackets hold on for their first state title since 1986. Final score, Wynn, 34. Stuttgart, 33. I told Coach, I told Coach, I said, Coach, I don't care how many yards I have. I can have 30 carries for five yards as long as we bring home the ring. 
win started the year tying Shiloh Christian 47 to 47 in the Alltel Hootons kickoff classic, but the Yellow Jackets finished the season number one in Class 4A, and D'Angelo Williams will be playing college football somewhere, possibly for Bobby Bowden at Florida State. Stuttgart's Slade Camp was the Class 4A title game MVP and the Ricebirds go-to guy all season. Stuttgart is followed by a couple of conference teams, Monticello and Watson Chapel in our 4A rankings, all three of those teams from the tough 4A Southeast. Then it's Alma, Hope, Searcy, Osceola, which blew out win in the regular season finale. The Seminoles are followed by Greenwood, Arkadelphia. Then it's West Helena. Crossit, Robinson, Batesville, Magnolia, Siloam Springs at number 16. Then it's the Greyhounds, Devil Dogs, Golden Goblins, and Malvern at number 20. Now the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. The quarterback is sometimes overlooked and wins ground-oriented attack, but Rob Lawson was invaluable to the Yellow Jackets this season because he doesn't make mistakes. And off the field, Lawson holds down a 3.8 GPA. It takes a lot of time, definitely, and uh, I, fortunately I've got my mom to make sure uh, I do the academic part as well as the athletics. So. She's a teacher? Or? Uh, she used to be. She's just a really smart woman. Rob finished his season with a state title, but even if Saturday's game was the last of his career, he's already laid the groundwork for a solid education. Congrats to Rob Lawson, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Thanks a lot, Mark, and congratulations to Rob, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. And how about those Win Yellow Jackets? A great year for Coach Don Campbell and his team. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. We'll show you highlights from last night's Class 5A title game next. I'm Gump. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by Sonic. Both El Dorado and Bentonville were making their first appearance in the modern day Class 5A title game last night at War Memorial. Hootons favored the 12 and 1 Tigers over El Dorado, which had lost five games during the regular season. And the first quarter belonged to Bentonville. The Tiger defense limited El Dorado to just 12 yards on 11 plays in the opening stanza. And Bentonville's offense put together an impressive drive with senior quarterback Alan Schlagenhaft passing to Shallon Aswell for 13 yards and junior Drew Denny for a 23-yard gain. Schlagenhaft got the TD with his two-yard run, but the kick failed. El Dorado's offense has benefited from big plays the past two weeks by speedy senior Curtis Clark. And in the second quarter, he took Jordan Smith's toss all the way for the score. And El Dorado led 7-6 when Chris Hollinsworth added the extra point. Bentonville would reclaim the lead with Schlagenhaft hitting Chris Brosh across the middle and Brosh takes it all the way down to the five yard line. A couple of plays later, Bentonville blows El Dorado off the ball and Tristan Tarks follows the front line into the end zone for a 13 to seven lead at the half. It could have been worse, but Bentonville committed three turnovers before the break. In the third quarter, Schlagenhaft extended Bentonville's lead to 20 to 10, hopping in from one yard out. And in the fourth quarter, Schlagenhaft zips it to Weston Geigel, who chunks it to Brosh, all the way down to the 15 yard line. That set up Brian Vaver's field goal, and 30 seniors helped Bentonville celebrate its first ever state football title. Final score, Tigers 23, El Dorado 16. Uh, the last four weeks, you know, uh, beating Pine Bluff, then going to Cabot and winning, going to Dex Cannon and winning, and coming down here and winning the best, biggest game I've ever been in. Uh, you know, this is just something special for our kids, our coaches, and our whole community. So the West wins it again. The 5A West has won nine of the past 15 state championship games. And behind Bentonville and El Dorado and Hooton's Arkansas football class 5A rankings, it's Texarkana, Fort Smith, Southside, and Russellville from the West. Then it's Cabot, West Memphis, Conway, Springdale, and Bryant. The second 10 starts with Pine Bluff. The Zebras won their first six games this year, but it lost their final four. Then it's Benton, Northside, Lake Hamilton, and Little Rock Central. Mountain Home is at number 16. Mills finishes the year at 17. Then it's McClellan, Van Buren, and Jacksonville. And thanks again for watching Hooton's Arkansas football this afternoon. We will be back next Saturday night. 
At our regular time, and we'll have highlights from the AAA and AA championship games should be two great ones, and we'll have our year-end highlight videos with teams from all over the state. That's next Saturday night as we return to our regular time, and we look forward to seeing you here on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Arkansas football. Highlights from yesterday's state championship games at War Memorial Stadium between the Lumberjacks and Bearcats and the Saints and Devils. Plus, our year-end highlight video featuring great moments from the past 15 weeks of high school action and this week's scholar athlete. It's all straight ahead. 30 minutes of high school football fun next on Hooton's Arkansas football. You make sure you're physical. Well, I'm riding on the ball game. You get that blood in your eyes, and you play with heart. <laughs> The high school football season is over. Last weekend, we crowned Wynn as the 4A state champ, Bentonville as the 5A state champion, and yesterday, the Class 3A and 2A state titles were played at War Memorial Stadium. And we will have highlights of those games coming up on this edition of Hooton's Arkansas Football, plus our year-end highlight video extravaganza. Teams from all across our state, good chance you'll see your favorite team on our music videos coming up. Actually, two of them, one for Class 5A and 4A, and the other one featuring Class 3A and 2A teams. We have those highlights from yesterday's AAA and AA state championship games, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week today from Bentonville, and much more. It's all coming up in the next half hour, and we're glad you're with us. We'll get started with a look at yesterday's AA title game next on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Hooton's Arkansas Football is brought to you by First Security Bank, by Landers, by Sonic. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas Football, brought to you by Sonic. Shallow Christian played in the Class 2A state title game yesterday for a remarkable fifth consecutive year. And Shiloh looked right at home at War Memorial Stadium taking on Augusta. The Saints marched 81 yards on 12 plays on their first series. Quarterback Rhett Lashley hurt his shoulder a week ago, but it looked fine yesterday. This 14-yard pass to James Schistler put the Saints in Augusta territory. Then Mike Sellers ran 11 yards. And three plays later, Sellers would score on this three-yard run to put the Saints up seven to zip. Shallow's offense is hard to stop, but its special team's play was even better yesterday. After the opening score, Shallow recovers the onside kick, and the Saints would then use a 10-play drive to take a two-touchdown lead. Sellers ran 16 yards on the first play of the series and would score from one yard out to make it 14 to nothing with five and a half minutes left. And Augusta hadn't even ran an offensive play yet. The Red Devils took advantage of their first possession, though, methodically driving 70 yards on 15 plays. James Turner had a 7-yard run to set up this 2-yard touchdown, and it was 14-6. But on the ensuing kickoff, shallow special teams tormented the Red Devils again. Drew Tucker takes off on the return. He didn't hand it off, and he didn't look back. 
going 89 yards for the touchdown, and Shalo led 21 to six. The Saints would add to their lead before halftime. Lashley hit sure-handed receiver James Schisler for a 25-yard pickup. Then Seller scored from eight yards out. It was 28 to six at halftime, and the Saints would go on to win it in their final season as a member of Double A football. Next year, the Saints will move up and try to tackle Class 3A. Final score: Shallow Christian 34. Augusta, 20. And all those guys, you know, they've worked extremely hard, and they earned the right to be in this game today, and they earned the right to win this game. <laughs> there was never really any doubt Shallow Christian was the top team in AA this year. The Saints were on a mission after losing the state title to Ryzen last year, and Shallow Christian began and ends the season, spent all 15 weeks ranked number one by Hooton's Arkansas football. The Red Devils are followed by Hampton, Harmony Grove, Junction City, then it's Carlisle, Barton, Harding Academy, Ryzen, and Charleston. The second 10 starts with Mineral Springs. Then it's the Little Johns, the Gators, the Rattlers, and Hazen. Coach Bill Buckner led Desart to a number 16 finish. Then it's Greenland, Mayflower, Mark Tree, and Boxsite. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Highlights from last night's Class 3A title game next. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Brought to you by Lander. The Class 3A title game was a thriller last night. Defending state champ Boonville and explosive Warren made it to Warren Memorial with undefeated records. Boonville's game plan was to keep it away from Warren by putting together time-consuming drives. And that's exactly what the Bearcats did, starting the night with an 86-yard march. Brian Taylor scored on a six-yard run, and Mason Shirley added the extra point to put Boonville up seven-zip. Warren's plan was to light up the scoreboard like a Christmas tree. The Lumberjacks only needed two plays to answer Boonville's score as quarterback Reed McKinney hooked up with Terrence Hampton for a 47-yard touchdown to tie it. McKinney passed for 258 yards and three touchdowns in the first half, but Boonville went to the dressing room with the lead thanks to some great option play by quarterback Brad West and halfback Ronnie Becker, who scored on the same play twice. Becker went in from 63 yards, and on this 30-yard run, Boonville led 39-33 in the fourth quarter when Hooton's Sonic Super Teamer Reed McKinney took over, running 11 yards for a touchdown to tie it with four minutes left. And two minutes later, McKinney, playing big on defense in the second half, picks up the fumble and returns it 36 yards to give Warren its first football title. McKinney was a runaway in the game's most valuable player voting too. He passed for three touchdowns, ran for three touchdowns, and scored on the fumble return. Final score, Warren Lumberjacks, 45, Boonville, 39. That's great. I never would have thought that I would have picked up the winning touchdown on the fumble. I mean, it's just a great feeling. He's always ready, you know, late in the ball game and a big ball game to go in. And, uh, you know, tonight was big, as big as they get. And, uh, you know, he's one of our best defensive players. And he came in and made a big play for us. Boy, it's great. It's a great feeling. Boy, I just, I just love it for these kids because these kids worked their tail off all year to get to this point. And, uh, you know, they never gave up tonight. It's the first time we've played four quarters in a long time. And uh, Boonville, hats off to Boonville. They got a great football team. You know, they got they got just as much speed as we have. And we didn't notice that until we got out here tonight. But number four ran off and left us a couple times. But our kids just kept fighting and fighting and fighting. So Coach Embry and the Lumberjacks finish 15-0 with impressive wins this year over Class 4A runner-up Stuttgart and over Monticello, plus last night's victory over Boonville to give the Lumberjacks the AAA title. Boonville's followed by a good dollar weight team, then it's Nashville and Pulaski Academy. Clarksville finishes the year at number six, then it's Star City, Dumas, the Red Bugs, and Rivercrest. Dardanelle starts the second ten. The Sand Lizards are followed by Yellville Summit, Ashdown, Gosnell, and BB. Truman finishes the year at number 16. Then it's Hamburg, the Hillbillies, Prairie Grove, and D. Queen.